Hello, I'm Tom Cruise. Thank you for joining us on this, the 44th episode of the Great British Baking Show. No, no, no. We're no. <laughs> Doctor Who, Dark Doctor Who, Heroes and Villains. Um, and this is Holden, I'm Hatter, not Tom, Tom Cruise. All right, Adric, uh, the companion, is our hero for this episode. Uh, today's September 4th, 2023, and he was in 40 episodes. 40 episodes? That, I thought it was more. It is a couple of seasons there, but I think he... Oh. No, he was in a lot more than 40 episodes. 40 stories? No, might be closer. 11 stories, 40 episodes. Just 11 stories? No. Because he, he... Hold on, hold on. It's kind of like in between things. Okay, so he shows up first in season 4. Um, with the Highlanders. And then he's there for the Underwater Menace, the Moon Base, the Macro Terror, the Faceless Ones, Evil the Dumbelikes, Tomb of the Cybermen, Bob of the Snowmen, Ice Warriors, Enemy of the World, Web of Fear, Fury from the Deep, Wheel in Space, Dominators, Mind Robber, Invasion, Crotons, Seats of Death, Space Pirates, um, oh, wait, wait, and the War Games. So Is that forty from nineteen eighty to nineteen eighty two. Oh, <laughs> he was killed. I'm thinking him. Jamie. Oh, Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> I'm thinking we Jamie. Can... I got Jamie on the brain because we were just talking about the two doctors. Oh yeah, we were. We were talking about the two doctors. And he out. Oh. <sighs> okay, never mind. Oh, never remember. mind. Um, <laughs> Jamie on the brain. Okay, so. Yes, that actually sounds correct for Adric. And and he that was sounds correct for Adric. He was killed off because it was decided that three companions was too many and that the character was unpopular. According to Matthew Waterhouse. The character was fairly unpopular at the time, yeah. Um, the, the actor who played Adric was upset at that decision. Wait, why are you reading but Wikipedia? Was <laughs> and mollified slightly by the fact that the doctor could still visit Adric at any point in time. So when they were firing him, they are like, don't worry, we can go back in time. <laughs> Especially if you're throwing on the charger. The, okay. The cameo is for the number of episodes. My bad. Brain fart. I was thinking uh, <laughs> Jimmy McCrimmon. All right, so. What a great story. Yeah. All right, so Adric was, yeah, he was fairly unpopular at the time. Uh, and they made, they even made his character less popular as it goes along mm -hmm. because he has he comes from a very patriarchal society and so he uh, talks down to very sexist yeah he talks down to uh, Tegan and Nyssa a good bit yeah. and I don't know if they're trying to make his character less missed when he was gone by doing that but that happens a lot towards the end it was uh, it felt like yeah they needed to get rid of him real quickly yeah. It wasn't something that, that you felt was being led up to. It's all of a sudden, oh, he's dead? <laughs> what? <Okay. laughs> and then the serial, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> and we can't go back and get him. And, and you were like, wait, wait. You're not going to let me hang on? They get him next week, right? I'm like, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> Doesn't come back. Yep, ever. Go ahead and cross him off the list. Yep. So, Adric, um, like I said, uh, at the time, he was the youngest actor to play a companion. He's is now he like been 14? No, 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 no. He looks 14. He was like uh, a 19, I think. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. But there's a new uh, companion coming in. I have no idea. There's a new companion coming in who is 18. The actress is 18. Mm -hmm. uh, she, he technically still holds the record, so they air her oh, so story. She, she but will she will be the youngest. She will be the youngest actress to ever play a companion. Really? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. I thought they had like. Um, people that weren't adults yet in Doctor Who playing companions, like... No, no, they, I knew they were playing was people who were young. young. Yeah, they were playing... I had no idea Adric was like a 19-year-old man. Yeah, <laughs> um, and... Uh, the that surprises me. Well, it's like uh, the Easier actress who played film. Nyssa. I mean, she looks young, yeah. but she's she's like 21, I think, or something. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and she's always relegated as a kid in the show, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, I'd like some champagne. Nah. <laughs> See, that's actually believable, but in America we have like 35-year-old Calvin Klein models playing high schoolers in a I saw high school Greece. musical. And, oh, yeah. yeah Zac Efron. <laughs> oh, and um, what was it? Glee. Oh, yeah, yeah thirty year olds playing really yeah. old people in high school. <laughs> well, it's it's the idealized version because if mm-hmm. you put in the high schoolers, they're gonna have all that acne and stuff, yeah. and they, they they want them to be past all that. You know, mm-hmm. they they want the idealized version. But anyway, Andrick was uh, sometimes you know, maligned. Who didn't um, get adult actors to play the children? Mm. Is mostly Disney. Which led to some controversy. <laughs> <laughs> they they use children for for yeah. that. It, it, you just have to work your production schedule around the fact they can only work a few hours a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have to be taught and stuff the rest of the time. They also had this one iCarly episode where she's like fifteen, and she had to kiss this nineteen year old, so her mom had to be on set for legal <laughs> reasons. No, that makes perfect sense. Also, the producers were big perverts. Did you hear about that? Of iCarly? No, like basically all the people that ran the Disney Channel, mm-hmm. all the, they're just big perverts, all of them. Yeah, I've not heard people. this, but okay. Yeah. In any industry, you're going to have problematic people. Uh, mm-hmm. There's one guy in Doctor Who's past who was either a writer or a producer. Mm-hmm. Lots of stuff came out about him later, mm-hmm. and uh, they, they just they, I wouldn't say they removed him from Doctor Who's past, but they don't really talk about him. Mm-hmm. He's still listed in credits and stuff, but they. I think there may be a special or two or some behind the scenes stuff he did that got mm-hmm. removed from later editions of the DVDs and kind of, yeah, kind of sweeping them under the rug. Um, it, supposedly it was really bad. I tried not to follow it because that kind of stuff, you know, just makes me sick. I am Shirley um, Duvall. Yeah, yeah, Shirley Temple, <laughs> she grew up and she became this, um, uh, well, she, she, um, got into government, I think, Shirley Temple. <laughs> but she, but she came out about like some awful stuff that well a lot of that people in Hollywood do yeah, yeah. Uh, Harvey Weinstein and Me Too and all that stuff yeah it's Hollywood Ugh. there's a funny movie called Burn Hollywood Burn mm-hmm. and uh, right now all of Hollywood's on strike and I don't mind if it just falls apart completely you know? yeah yeah kind of, kind of, I don't know it's just something about our economy I feel that way about every industry. Even video games. Every industry? Cars, yeah. That are all just going to pot. Oh, wow. Well, that's the dismantling of the country. Yeah. <laughs> Syst- systematic dismantling. Anyway, yeah. But enough about that. Edric. Edric. So, yeah, he was He's only in there for... Uh, yeah, very smart. Only, mostly medical genius, yeah. Because he was held back about seven years. <laughs> he was 19. So. No, um, anyway, so... Uh, Really smart. Uh, he was our second mathematical mm-hmm. genius after Zoe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, ends up traveling with the doctor. And he, his main shtick was pretending to go along with the bad guys' evil plans. Yeah. To then go ahead and uh, try and defeat the bad guy that way. He's the double double crosser. Yeah, he he does that with the vampire one mm-hmm. in E Space. He does that with the master. Uh, a couple of times. Remember the master had him in the deal. He does that with the guys in the base on uh, Kinda. Mm-hmm. You remember? He kind of did. Yeah. He, 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 he likes playing the people off of each other. Yeah, he, he embraced this role of I am a young, vulnerable child and I can be influenced. Yeah. yeah. But not really. Haha. <laughs> Just... But I he, tricked you. <laughs> to be fair, he did it so much better than Turlo did it. Mm, Turlo was, yeah. Well, Turlo started out not great, but he get now he's gotten better as he gets rid of the Black Guardian. He becomes, he's still a coward, but he got, he got rid of the Black Guardian, so he's not a double crosser, you know? I, I thought he was maybe, yeah, well, he's almost more interesting when he's trying to kill the doctor <laughs> and just doing a very inept job of doing so. <laughs> um, now, of course, Adric was there. I feel like Adric's character would have been more interesting if he did really want to kill the doctor. Oh. Right. So Adric was there when uh, Romana left mm-hmm. and K9 left with Romana mm-hmm. 
uh, he was there with the doctor when they started eventually starting to pick up some other companions and of course there for the regeneration from the fourth to the fifth doctor yeah. and then stuck around long enough of course then he dies in the middle of first doctor or the fifth doctor's first season he was never really like a mainstay companion He's never like a Jamie or, you know, someone... Well, he's not there forever. forever. Well, most of the companions themselves. are there for a season, at most two seasons, generally speaking. When I mean, they might have cameos and come back. Mm -hmm. But um, with the exception of, like, Jamie, who was there for three years with the, you know, super amount of episodes, like a hundred-something yeah. episodes. And later on, to a lesser extent, Sarah Jane Smith, who didn't have near as many episodes, but had like three years to her name, you know, the, almost the same amount of time, maybe two and a half. Mm -hmm. They're just shorter seasons. Yeah, um, most of the companions would be there for a little bit, and then their contract would expire after a year, and they would bring somebody else on, you know? I, I just feel like there's some mainstay companions, and then some, like, B-roll companions, and your, your A-roll companions are, like, Jamie and Romana 1 and 2. Sarah Jane Smith. Sarah Jane Smith. And then your B-roll companions are more companions there that just kind of there is filler, kind of like K-9 would be the best example, but characters like Adric, they kind of facilitate the conversations between the Doctor and the mainstay companion, yeah. or just kind of smooth the transition from, you know, a core group of two companions into a newer companion. That was always Adric to me. He was just kind mm -hmm. of the filling in between the... Okay, yeah, and, and, the other and a lot of people would agree with that. Yeah. Um, uh, but having him in the TARDIS with two females who one was older mm -hmm. and the other one was not as good as mathematics, but she was really smart and knowledgeable yeah. about the technology. Um, and he was younger and more, uh, you know, more um, teen angst -y. Mm -hmm. Uh, at least he made an interesting dynamic. And he did. I prefer him over Tegan's incessant whining. Mm. I like yeah. Tegan. I, 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 I would like her more if she whined less. <laughs> I'd argue that Three Companions isn't too many. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it's, it was just kind of a hurdle for the, the amount of time that they had for like uh, writing out the shows. Because you can write with that many characters in that amount of time. Yeah. But... But how they dealt with it was just, oh, we don't know what to do with these characters. Let's put them in an air vent for an air duct for two episodes. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Terminus, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but three companions uh, can work really well. Uh, you have Adric Tegan Nissa, or now Turlo Tegan Nissa. Uh, now we just lost Nissa. Um, back of the original three, mm -hmm. you know, you have um, well, Ian, Barbara. Right. Yeah, yeah. Ian, Barbara, and. Uh, the granddaughter, mm -hmm. um, and let's see. I feel like the newer stuff, like the hour-long episodes, would mm -hmm. lend even more so to like uh, more companions, like three or so. Uh, it depends. There are times when in the TARDIS you've just got one companion, mm -hmm. or on the very occasional, like the the super rare, the one serial with no companions. Yeah, like, just the, Baker, the, the Debbie Assassin. Um, it, they, they tried it. It didn't really work. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have uh, episodes where there's sometimes as many as eight or twelve companions in when they get a bunch of people together. Mm -hmm. Something like the Five Doctors or uh, later down the line, the Utopia Trilogy. Mm -hmm. And you end up with a bunch of companions in the TARDIS all at once. Yeah. Um, but generally speaking... One to three is about where you want it, you know? Two's a, two's a good number. I feel like they usually have more success with more companions because when they try to force, like, a popular companion, they, they're not... It, it's just something that has to happen naturally. Like Jamie, the, it was just kind of his character developed naturally into one of those... And they said, let's bring him on, yeah. Yeah. But when they try to force it, it, it doesn't always work out so well. Like depends on the writing. When depends they on the show running. Really depends just on the try actors. To stick Dodo in there, and everyone watching the show is like, no, mm -hmm. we don't. <laughs> and then they have to push her out. I feel like the the Doctor is a character as interesting as like you know Sherlock Holmes, for example. Yeah. And he could certainly pull off an episode or two being by himself, which they just for. Yeah, they just don't really ever 
they're not really ever up to that challenge for writing uh, an episode. <laughs> it's, it's it it feels like it becomes very formulaic, and yeah. the writers just kind of go with that. Let's compare that to the episode of The Prisoner we just watched. Huh? You in Doctor Who, you have to we have the Doctor. The companion's job is to ask questions. The Doctor explains it. Yeah. Um, and so you get this uh, back and forth across the screen. What would the viewer ask? Mm -hmm. What would the uh, so the, the doctor gets to explain it? Mm -hmm. um, the prisoner, he spent half that episode not saying anything. Yeah, he spent half that episode Strong not side. telling, doing. Mm -hmm. Now I think the difference is is that Doctor Who is a showing to children. Especially very much in the That's beginning, but family later, mm -hmm. and the kids don't know what's going on sometimes unless you explain it to them. Mm -hmm. They may have never seen uh, certain things. They may not understand certain concepts, and so it has to be simplified down to them, mm -hmm. so they can uh, they can explain it because they're going to try to pick it apart as bad as anyone else. Mm -hmm. But if you need, they need some sort of explanation, like yeah. like uh, recently, um, the King's Demons. How did they live in such unbearable cold? Mm -hmm. Food, lots of food. You know, <laughs> that's why they burn the calories off. Mm -hmm. um, they it's just they they had to burn the fat to keep the body warm. Mm -hmm. um, and the prisoners aimed more at adults. Um, we're not talking rated R or anything, but it's more towards an adult's imagination and is more towards an adult understanding. Yeah, that's um, kind of the difference between the. Um, target audiences with the prisoner yeah. you, you see him messing with the stuff like the medicine filling it with water and mm -hmm. you're kind of just led to interpret what you're seeing on the screen whereas with the family children show like you said you have to have those characters that relate to the kids that are watching it that help the kids understand ask the same questions they would yeah or whiny like they would be <laughs> so that's how we end up with characters like Tegan like Tegan and Patrick <laughs> or, or these younger a little bit more whiny characters. They're not always fun, but they're, they're kind of a necessity of the show at the time. Two points of note. First mm -hmm. of all, uh, we would be remiss if we did not state that Adric was the very first major companion to die on the Doctor. We, we had two been. others, Can't Katarina and that. Sarah Kingdom. Neither Sarah of them were major companions. Been. Katarina made was only there for two serials. Made from this one to this one, and that was it. Um, the uh, the Myth Makers into Dog's Master Plan, two episodes in Dog's Master Plan, and Sir Kingdom was wholly contained within Dog's Master Plan. There's a, a third companion. You don't see it as off camera, but right when when they left Dodo, she got hit by a car. Also... <laughs> Dodo was at least there for many stories, hmm. especially as the seasons were back then. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, with 44 episodes or 42 episodes. Uh, okay. Second point of note: I can't believe. We're doing two podcasts tonight. One about mm -hmm. the fourth Doctor and one about Adric. And Adric is the longer friggin' episode. Uh, more to discuss there. Well, about companions. Mm -hmm. We'd already pretty much stated Baker everything is possible just... about Tom Baker during Baker's the... Baker's just how we still like him. <laughs> yeah. During during all the stuff of Tom Baker, we, we said everything we could possibly say about him. Uh, did you have any questions? Companions are kind of nitpick. Yeah. Um, does he ever come back... Not he's he, his character's dead. They could theoretically go back in time before he dies. No, they can't even. They can't go back and visit him when he was younger because he was in East Space. Mm -hmm. They can't go back to his youth. He, he died in a fixed point. In and, time. Well, no, no, not a fixed point. In time. He died phasing in and out, so the TARS couldn't get a grip on it. Yeah, and and then it crashed, which makes it that much more ironic that this young up and coming nineteen year old actor, yeah, who is just received the boot from one of the most popular TV shows and and to console him they said oh we can always bring you back and then <laughs> and they, they never and did. they said that probably knowing oh, he's never nah, come he's back. gone they it, specifically wrote this it's, character it's, out in a way yeah, that he can never come back it's uh it's the entertainment industry they're going to lie to you mm -hmm. it's just this just the way of the world um all right uh any other questions about Edric or anything what do you think was his favorite series uh your favorite serial with Edric that's a good question. I like the first time we meet Adric. That okay. was kind of the state of decay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when they go to his planet in East Space and he's stealing fruit. I, that, you kind of see the beginning of his character arc and he has mm -hmm. a lot of character development there. 
as he's, he's, you know, I'm a man and I can go fend and do this mm -hmm. and I can earn this medal. That was, that was fun to see. Um, obviously watching him make this grand sacrifice and the symbology in his last episode with like the star breaking, that was all rather well written. Yeah, and Earth Shock was really good. Hugging um, on the heart strings. No, Full Circle was his first one, I think. Um, okay. I really, uh, man, I like, uh, Full Circle a lot, mm -hmm. um, and oddly enough, Weir's Gate is messed up, but I like it, um, although I hate to see what want to leave. Yeah. Uh, Fort of Doomsday is interesting, uh, Kinda, he's really good in Kinda, but his best one is Earthshock, just mm -hmm. flat out, it's... There's no contest. Yeah, I think they at least sent him out in a blaze of glory. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> it was is definitely a, a memorable departure for a, a companion. Yeah, it's one of the more so. Yeah. Uh, much better than oh, I'm just gonna stay yeah. here and help him, which is what Nissa does. A couple yeah. of uh, after they pick up Turlo, a few couple of three serials later. So it's almost really like what happened to Romana. A lot of these really popular companions kind of just end up being left behind when their contracts are up like um, Susan that's Leela Leela was just kind of left behind yeah as well. It, well in the classic stuff it's generally speaking it's it, when you're getting rid of a, a, a female companion it's oh I fell in love and I'm sticking staying behind mm -hmm. or like uh, what's the face of the myth makers um, or uh, you know Susan in, in in a Dalek invasion of Earth, mm -hmm. or uh, um, like Leela, mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of Sarah Jane, because he gets called to go back to Gallifrey and she can't come with him. Right. She just walks out on her own. She, uh, to the best of our knowledge, never gets married, um, despite the episode called The Marriage of Sarah Jane Smith. <laughs> and then um, in the modern stuff, the women never seem to leave the TARDIS for love with, I would argue, one exception, which would be um, uh, Amelia Williams. Hmm. I don't think I've seen that one yet. Nope. What I found we'll unique... We'll get there in series like six. <laughs> what I find unique about uh, Adric's appearance is that sometimes with the very popular companions, when their contract is up and they get left behind, there's like a, the next episode or the serial after that, they kind of go back and explain what happened to that companion and why they're no longer with the show for like maybe people that missed that that week, you know, the, the season finale. So they go back and, and they talk about how Romana was left behind and the Time Lords and she's kind yeah. of, you know, gone rogue like the Doctor did. And they, yeah. they kind of mention Sarah Jane Smith and then... Adric was one that when his contract was up, it was a very big plot point of what ha that he's no longer with the show, and they still go back and address, you know, hey, he's no longer with us. A few times. Of, yeah, multiple times, yeah. which I thought was because uh, T very and unique. Turlo shows up. There's like a, a there's um, time flight, mm -hmm. and then the, and then um, after time flight, it's uh, let's see. Arc of Infinity, Snake Dance, and we're still with two companions. And it's not until we get to a module on Dead that we finally get Turlo. Mm -hmm. And Tegan is still mourning Adric's death four serials later, like like yeah. like actively mourning him. And when she gives Turlo his room, room, and then she gets all all upset. upset. It's, it's like change it. Okay, okay. What I think that they were doing was something very um, difficult and risky yet respectful is, is they're kind, kind of trying to use a, a family show with the children's character. You know, Adric was the one that the viewers related to that were watching around his age and, and he kind of voiced what the characters would and then he dies which is kind of very upsetting for a younger person to watch their show insert that kind of represents them as the viewer die and, and it it took these um, younger viewers and it kind of 
introduced them to more adult themes, kind of like, you know, watching Bridge to Terabithia or, you know, uh, The NeverEnding Story, where yeah. you, where it's more of a family movie or a children's movie and you're facing But the horse these, dies. Yeah, these <laughs> difficult themes of, of death and loss and survivor's guilt. And it's no, 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 <laughs> not it's, something that... Because today, children are so very, very sheltered. And if something like that was in a children's movie, they'd be like, well... Yeah. Riots. <laughs> well, it was it was before they started treating children like infants. You mm-hmm. know, uh, you used to like Old Yeller. There that was a be, children's film, and the kid had to go shoot yeah, the dog. You uh, know? A better um, preparation for life, but now it's it's all of a sudden it's it's very hard black and white lines of you're this age, you fit into these categories. Now you're this age, oh, all of a sudden you're only these categories and there's no, you know, that can be very hard for kids nowadays, whereas back then there's a little bit more, you know, well, I mean, you're around this age and you're experiencing these types well, of things. Well, and the weirdest right thing is, is that kids need to grow up, period, but we shouldn't, yeah. we shouldn't push them, mm-hmm. um, but we do need to teach them things like there's death, Prepare things like that, life, yeah. right, but with the internet today, it's not like it was in the 60s, 70s, 80s, with yeah. the internet today, nothing's hidden. That's Nothing's hidden from the, kids. Yeah, I mean, they could find out anything they want to know about anything, no matter how good or bad it is. Kids now have the ability to expose themselves and desensitize themselves at their own rate, which is, uh, yeah, just, it's just very juxtaposed to what society used to be like, you know, a few decades ago. Yeah. We, we've made some... Technology is vastly evolving how, how we, as society, yeah, just... He's no good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can be concerning, but right. anyway. I'm sure they said the same thing about books. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we're at the Five Doctors? You can't let the peasants read. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what the Catholic Church thought. All right. Um, the main group's the two doctors, and we are actually catching up. We're missing a couple weeks, but the main group's missing a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. So we are hopefully going to catch up with them sometime during Colin Baker, or at the very mm-hmm. latest during Sylvester McCoy. Oh, McCoy? Yeah. No. Oh, that's not McCoy? Oh, that's McGann. That's McGann. McCoy is this one. Yep. Yeah, with the hat. And the gentleman's McCoy doctor is Pertwee. <laughs> oh, he's the gentleman's doctor? Yes. I don't the know. gentleman doctor. Oh, uh, yeah, he does have the ruffles. Yeah, he's Between these guys, oh, he has the pocket watch. Hmm? McGann's looking pretty pretty fly. It's looking like a, like a pian- pianist. There you go. <laughs> Fit right it's in with Beethoven, yeah. yeah. All right. Just uh, imagine tails being on that coat. Do you have any other questions about Edric? Nope. Uh, that about covers it. Cool. We'll see you next week when hopefully, uh, assuming he's up for coming back from New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we will be doing um, the Black Party. Villains. And villains and Mara. Mara. Mara came back. That was <laughs> a, a shock and a surprise to everyone. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.